Number one, the flyer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen. Number two, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, Good morning, lads. Um, first of all, I'll explain the uh, payout. We're paying top four, £10 all in, and we're paying a £5 suit of pool, which is optional, paying the first two. Right, first of all, I'd like to take your money. Yeah. Team money's all been sorted. It's all our team money and suit of pool. pool. Right. Lovely. I'd like Peter to draw. Even. Go on, Pete. Even. Get the even, Pete. Evens. Oh, yeah. Evens. Oh, yeah. Right. Get your envelope. Here's your envelope. Also, Lovely. while I, we're talking, to explain the pegging, peg one is at the white boat on the far bank. Yeah. Right. And then so on around the bends up to the end peg. Right. Okay, lads. So let's right. get fishing. Best and may the best team win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. Ryan's your hat. Yeah. Right, we'll draw for our pigs and then we'll have a sort out. Right, I think. Right. Come on. Yeah, they're all folded up anyway. Oh, oh here he is! Got Come me, Tina! Don't worry! Come in, get it here, hurry up! Right, we've got our peg numbers, which ain't too bad today. So, you know, over the last few days, it's, say, red, not mild weather, so it's not too bad. The colour looks, it's a bit, got a bit more colour than it is, say like yesterday, it was quite clear yesterday. I know there's quite a few fish caught, so it looks like it could be a good day. Right, I've come down here, Tuesday I've come down here, and um, I've caught a lot of fish. I've caught on a punch short of five metres, and I've caught on a squat log. But what I found was, you put in empty to start with the cross, and leave it for half hour, and fish your punch out. But you find they drop down your peg, so what I was doing was giving them a little ball punch, and they was coming back up. But there's a lot of fish there, there's a lot of roach. I've had about 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. But you're finding, what you're doing on the squat as well, if you're feeding too much, they're dropping down and going, they don't want a lot of bait. And through the day, if you're catching a lot of fish, keep feeding in. Well, were you getting on a drop, Pete? I did have a few off the bottom, yeah. yeah. I had a few up in the water, right. but nothing, not that many. When it got hard later on, I've come up in the water and I've caught a few better ones. What I think is the best way to go up there is, if you've got, so like, along this stretch up here, you, at nine metres, you've got the bottom of your shelf. If you fish that for your squat line. The only trouble is you haven't got a lot of scope, so if you want to start on the punch, squat, you know, normally take off in about an hour. So, you know, you want to give that time to settle down. Start off by feeding him, you know, the usual tactics and all that. Um, when you fish the punch, if you've got a, quite a bit of scope, as you go around the bend, you might get a bit more width than that to go by. So, when you start off the punch, if you find, if you feel that you're too close to your squat line, try not to feed it, because you might, you know, spread your fish, get them confused a bit. So keep the crumb going in or what? On the punch line, yeah, but don't go silly with it. Don't keep like every chuck, just like fish it out a little bit. Was it ever seen size with the squat fish a lot better size? No, they were the same size they fish. Was. Yeah, I thought they would be, but so they So they wasn't. keep coming on the punch, it's probably worth sticking out a little bit longer as opposed to going Well, around, yeah? when you go out first on the squat, it's going under mm. every time and you're emptying it on the squat to start with. But um, if you're getting them on the punch, you can always feed it and come back to it on the punch. Yeah, yeah. To start off on the punch, you should catch pretty instant on that. They have a waggler set up if you think it's necessary, if you've got enough uh, features and that to go by. Alright, so you all know the score on that. I think there is odd chub anyway being caught down on the right, straights in there, the on the flood. So I think it's all worth, worth it, so probably all setting up a waggler. Just, just, just catch on the well, caught on the waggler Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it might be worth every now and again just to have a chuck yeah, with a waggler yeah, and see if you can it's find always, it's you never know one bonus fish could like could do a lot today yeah i've, I've, I've got to give it a couple of minutes 
you know, I think it's always worth having a little chuck over there. If, if you know, if you've got a chub sitting there a bit hungry, he's going to take it and do <laughs> away and straight from the off. If you've got a feature, fish to the feature and all that. Brian, you're the runner today, so if you, yeah. you know, you, you know, you do your usual job up and down. You, you'll get odd little gudgy, but when when I've caught them, I've come up and I've started catching roach again because they're tiny and like your main roach, you're ounce and a half fish. Yeah. Strung out rig, or? I, I set up a strung out rig, yeah, but most of my fish was caught on a pole with Unless when it went a bit hard, I strung it out and come up in the water and I caught a few out. It flows quite hard, it does tow quite hard. Uh, four tens and four twelves I would use, 22 hooks. Um, but there is a lot of fish there. What about the other areas? What else do we know about it? Well, Chris knows quite a lot about around the bend. What about well, as you go the, around the bend? Bend the winning match. I reckon the winning match. Yeah? Yeah. Any where, the flow, where the flow comes around, it hits you right under your feet before it starts going off. You ain't got to fish so far out. Your fast, the fast size, a big slack. Yeah. Um, you do well there. Wait, you, there's a lot of bonus fish there, is it? No, it's it? just a slack of roach. It's always a good area. Yeah. That should win the match, definitely. What, Time shown squat fish. What's that, about peak seven, eight, nine? On the bend will be five, probably five, six and seven. Yeah. That, that area there, I think the winner should come from, or the end peaks. When you get on that straight, <laughs> there you've got eight, nine, Pigs up there, aren't you? We're about nine pigs on the straight. On the straight, yeah. All them pigs old chub, but you only have a little dabble. Just I mean, it's like, it's like there all the time, little and often. You just have a little dabble now and again. Yeah. Walking down there this morning, yeah, the fish were topping all the way through on the straight. Yeah, so there's plenty of fish down, down there. Right? So we can't, there is bonus fish to be had there. We yeah, always have got to just have a dabble, like forget them, like yeah. you know, but have a little go, and everyone's a bonus. They've but been having a big perch along there as well. Yeah, do you reckon it's worth fishing the chop worm at all? I'm going to put it in late if I'm struggling. Yeah, yeah, it's always worth putting put it in late if, you, if you're struggling. I don't, if it's I don't really think you're going to need it. But it's keep it simple. It's, it's, it's worth thing, No ground bait, are we? Nah. No, no, no I, I mean, you've got a bit of colour in there, so it probably will take it. It's been mild. I did try chop worm because I didn't need to. But I think everyone can catch it. Looks it, yeah. But I don't think a waggler, because it tows a little bit too hard on a waggler, I don't think you'll catch on a waggler because you'll like it tows more than the inside of it and you'll be checking your line. Yeah. It won't be right. Shall I try your bolognese with our point? <laughs> <laughs> so um I think that's about it really. Keep the squat going all the yeah. time. Anyone, anyone else alright, yeah? Yeah, we're yeah. So you are the of the day. Right, let's go lads, let's, just, uh, let's do well. Come on, let's boys. Let's have a good time, yeah? Let's go and get it. Good, let's go okay, and do it. Let's go 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 and do it. Let's Till quarter past three. No, up, no, past, 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 past two, isn't it? Quarter past ten, right past two. Right, the, the main thing is to get yourself nice and comfortable. As you see, I've got adjustable legs and I've set them there and I've just adjusted these to make the box nice and sturdy. So that when I sit on it, I can sit nice and comfortable and I can stand up and there's no worry of falling in or, or the box slipping from side to side. So that's one of the things I like to do, get myself really comfortable. Next thing I like to do is to 
get me keep net in place. Now, at the moment they're doing all these sort of mod cons and everything to make life a lot easier for you when you're actually on the canal banks. A lot of the time you, um, you intend to have concrete banks and you can't get your bank sticks in so now they come up with all these detachments and everything which I'll show you how it works. If I screw that into my net, screw that round and then another little trick when you're fishing canals is to always put your bottom of your keep net round there like that so that as you get boats go by it doesn't go up and down in your swim making a fair bit of disturbance especially when you're fishing close in and that just fits neatly on the arm on the arm down like that tighten it up and that's nice and nice and safe and just where I want it and I haven't got to worry about um, it falling in or a boat going by pulling it in. It's another handy little gadget. Right, I'm just about to knock up some uh, some punch crumb. The idea is to wet it through and get it to the right consistency. At the moment that's still a bit too dry. What we do is I'll knock this up and I'll leave it a minute or two and it'll dry out again and then I'll, I'll wet it through again. And then what we'll do is we'll run it through a sieve to get rid of all the um, wanted lumps. <laughs> right, now we're going to leave that just for a minute, because that will dry off again. If I sieve it through now, what will happen is it'll be too dry to use for the start. So we'll leave that for about a minute or so, and then we'll wet it down again. And then I'll run it through the sieve, as I say, and get rid of all the unwanted lumps, and then basically be ready to go. If you see the size of me landing there, it's more, <laughs> it's more in the carp sort of range. Um, it's very big, but it's amazing how many times on these canals you do actually hook a big carp. And I've had the mickey taken out of me quite a few times, but also I've had a lot of people ask me to borrow it when they've been lucky enough to hook a carp. Plus the fact, when you get to my age, you need something with a nice big net so you don't miss it. Right, I've left that for five minutes, and as you can see, it's a lot drier now. What we'll do is we'll put, wet it up just, just slightly bit more, just to get that, little, that nice consistency back. And, then we'll, and that's perfect. And what we'll do now is we'll sieve it to get rid of all the unwanted lumps. This is a rather unusual pole cup, it's one that's, um, it's not in the shops, you can't buy them in the shops, you have to make them yourself, but um, very effect effective. What I'll do, I'll show you how this works roughly now, right in the edge where I won't do any damage to anything. What it is, as you can see, it's, it's, it's dangling and the reason you have it like that is that you can shake it without knocking any bait out of it and it's on two sliding swivels. I'll show you what happens. I'll sort some bait out quick and put it in the edge. I'll get out some squats. I'll put a few squats in it, like that. The main trouble is when people pass the pole through, they're liable to turn the pot and it, the bait comes out. But as you can see, you can shake this about like this and no bait comes out. And if I drop it right down the edge, we don't want to get accused of cheating. You'll see that it turns upside down and then you just lift it out like that and I found that to be one of the best cups that, that you can get hold of at the moment. I don't think it'll be long before someone fetches them out on the market but you can do the same with ground bait as well. I'll just show you the same with ground bait. We won't wet it with just at the moment a lot of the odd best I is to put the ground bait in just just reasonably dry but it's the same with this, you just shake it around a little bit. It doesn't never come out. And if you drop it in the edge, you'll see again, it turns itself upside down and the swivels that were on it, drops it. And everything comes out on top. So, um, I'm very, very proud of that cup. <laughs> that 
think that we don't be quiet because that all that will do is fill the fish up. They're feeding that so quick, go through that and then disappear. That would not require. And that is the finish, and that punch crumb is now ready to use. Perfect. I'm not going to use a great deal of ground bait today, but at the moment the fish seem to be responding to ground bait, especially on canal. So I'm just going to mix a little bit up, just enough to put some in at the start. Put them out of the way. What I'm going to use is a little bit of Super Lake. Not a great deal. And a little bit of surface cloud. Put them in like that. And just get a little drop of water. Just put a little, just want me a second. Just going to put a little bit of a tractor, just a little bit on the ends, just to get rid of any smells. And just a little bit of this unintention tractor. Just put a little bit of that in the water. It just gets rid of any human smells that there might be about. And then just add a little bit of water to the ground bait and mix it in. I'm not mixing a lot up. I really only intend to put some in at the beginning. I'm going to cap it in, I'm not going to throw it in. Just keep it on the dry side. Get in there. I don't want it wet, I just want it sort of dampified. That's coming there. That's coming to a nice texture right and then what just a fraction more and just to make sure the ground bait's dead right wipe the bottom of the bowl out I just run it through the sieve that just gets rid of any lumps there we go it makes it nice and fluffy do that it. It's nice to leave a few crumbs on the side of the bank because there's always plenty of robins and blackbirds about. If it had been a little bit cold I'd expect we'd have had robins here already. That's one of the nice things about fishing is that you get plenty of wildlife and the colder it gets the sort of the braver the birds seem to get. Another thing I'm just going to put a little bit of grilled emp in, just a little bit. That just because I am going to put some emp in, just enough to just flavour it a little bit, just put that in and rub that through. You can see everything's rubbed through a sieve, and then just mix it in, and that's a lovely fluffy texture. And you can always tell if ground bait's mixed up right, you should be able to squeeze it into a nice ball, and then nice and hard, and then just rub it, and if it all comes out fluffy again, See how it's all gone back to how it was. You know the ground bait's mixed up just right. So that ground bait's nice. So that's all mixed up. Let's tidy myself up a little bit. Put that on there. Put that behind there. Right. It actually looks like we're getting ready to start fishing. Right, I'm just about to plumb up. Gorgeous morning for it. And I honestly think it's gonna fish its socks off today. I think I've just about got about the right depth there. As I've fished this before. It should be nigh on. And it is. That's perfect. The time there is 10 to 10. The max isn't due to start for another 25 minutes, so obviously I can't start pre baiting. But the idea is now is to go through what rigs I've got here, which I've got two, three top threes, one is the one I've got in my hand now is a punch rig, which I intend to start on at the whistle. Um, the bait I should be using at the start will be bait punch, which uh, is just a slice of bread, which is steamed, 
And what I like to do is I like to flatten it out after it steams, which enables me with a punch to get a nice punch finish. I've got some tipex in here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mark the depth. Come here. What we do, make it nice and easy. If I pull the elastic out, hook it on the bottom there, and then just with me white marker pen, then I'll know the depth at the bottom of the shelf, so that if I do break up, I've got me markers on the, I've got me two markers on me pole for me depth. So I've got them to me depth, I know exactly the depths. At fishing, you do like to come up off the bottom, go up off the bottom, but you do like to know exactly where the bottom is if you have to find out. The idea is to punch. When you steam it, and after you've pressed it, it comes off perfect. Now, once that hits the water, that will swell and cover that hook. The idea of steaming it, basically, is that that punch is capable of catching more than one fish. Um, it stays on a lot longer. And that is the reason for, for steaming it. So, that is my punch rig finished. And that is ready to go at the whistle. The next rig I should be plumbing up will be the rig I'm going to use for the pinky. The pinky being the fluorescent pinky. And I should be feeding the squat. I'm fishing the, the fluorescent pinky over the top of the squat. Not too many squat, 12, 15 squats maximum at a time. Fishing the, the pinky, the fluorescent pinky, that was a hook bait over the top. With the squat, it's very important not to overfeed. The idea with the squat is to just to feed it little and plenty. I've had a quick look behind me earlier on, and I normally like to put a pole roller up, but as you can see, I've got so much rubbish behind me. Um, quite honestly, it's a waste of time, so I'll actually use the trees as a pole roller today. In the canal, what we've got is we've got a shelf. I should be feeding the pinky rig just above on the shelf and the squat rig which I will plumb up shortly or we'll fish, I'll be fishing tight right up the shelf so I'll, I'll be feeding three lines and that's the depth I've got I need to come down another seven or eight inches when I go and plumb up on me on my squat rig I'll have probably another 12 inches shallower than that because I'll be fishing right up the shelf to say I'll be starting on the squat on the on the punch on the six meter line I'll be going out to eight meters on the pinky just on the shelf and then I'll be going out at 11 meters right up the shelf with the squat One. And a roach, about two ounces. I actually started off fishing a bread punch at six meters. And uh, weren't really catching a great deal. I've gone on to squat because my runner told me Dickie Carl was catching on it. And it seems to have worked really well. Since then I haven't actually stopped catching. I've not needed to change over lines, which is stuck at six meters. It is actually quite easy fishing. You don't have to lay it out too far on the water. It's a, just drop it in really, let the flow take it. 
and feed some squat. What's, what's happened to me today is I've been catching fish down on the bottom, but all I've been catching is little fish. So what I've done, I've strung my rig out and come up in the water, and I've started to get the odd better fish, but they cut, don't seem to be able to get their heads down. I can't, when I say that, I can't pin them down in one place, but I think that'll come later. That there's not enough fish there at the minute to get them into a frenzy, which what happens is your squats go through the water and there's loads of fish competing for your bait. And it, that way is they have your bait a bit more and um, you catch more fish, obviously. This rig here is my bulk rig, which what happens here is the main bulk there, as you can see, settles, and these three little number 13 shots sink underneath it. This one here, which is strung out, which is, uh, we have got no bulk, the shots sink slower, and the fish watch it go down, and then they get inquisitive and they'll eat it when it settles, hopefully. Yeah, it's gone a bit hard out there now. Started up all right on the punch. Had a pound or so in the first half there. But over the last, what, three quarters of an hour, I've had about six fish. Fishing seven metres on punch at the moment. And it's gone very, very hippy. It's gone out to 11 up the shelf on squat and nicked three fish. And it just died as well. And I carry on feeding the 11 and have another little dabble out there shortly. The only thing I can make out from it, I'll bump two roach one after the other. And since then, it's very hard to get a bite. I've deepened up, nicked a few gudgeon. But the roach have done a vanishing act. Hopefully, they'll come back onto the feed shortly. They're nice stamped little roach. You're not going to get a big weight, but you're going to get a few of them. Oop, I'll have to use a disgorger on that one. Just, just slightly in its mouth, so if I just... so you don't hurt it. It, lovely. Mm. Using these little barbie silks, it comes out nice and easy and it doesn't never damage the fish at all, which is what we want to make sure because they're our, our fish of the future. There's definitely a nice lot of fish here. It's amazing how many bites I've had already. When you squat fishing, this is the main thing to remember, as you see, I'm feeding regularly. I'm not feeding a great deal. I'm probably feeding a dozen squat a time. And, and that's normally about what you want to feed, a dozen to squats. And if you only feed more, you'll find if the fish really start to come, you really start to get a lot of bites. Right, this is a nice swim. It's a um, nice bush hanging over on the far side, which I've been uh, baiting up with bronze red maggot and caster, which I'm hopefully going to get some chubber there, out there a little bit later on. At the moment I'm fishing about six, seven metres, um, fishing the squat. It's pretty slow to start the first half an hour. Um, I've got a dozen or so average roach now. But the fish are not staying with the bait, so it's just a case of uh, when they turn up, get out as many as you can. At the moment I'm fishing bolt down, um, it's all the shots, so I'm fishing the bait's getting down to the bottom as quick as possible. Uh, they're not up in the water at all. I was fishing along the bottom at first, uh, I was picking up too many small gudgeon, so I'm fishing about four inches off now, hopefully pick up the better stamp roach. Hello Rowan, how are you doing there? Well, I've started to get a few more, like on the inside. They'll be feeding a bit of imp oh, and yeah. leaving the squats out a bit. Uh, yeah. They started off with gudging and then the roach moved in. Yeah, but... well, old hemp, even though it's cold in the winter, sometimes will bring the better fish in. But it seems to have died a bit now. Yeah. It's uh, hard to string them together, keep coming and going. I think everybody now is finding that is everyone all along now is struggling. Nobody's really bagging up at all now. A few fish here and there. Number one. Which is lost. I believe it. They're supposed to keep dropping them on. 
Yeah, they're not taking it that well, they're just touching it. I think they're just nipping the squats. Yes, well, you just go over all the cold weather, so it makes a difference. I'm a lot happier now than what I was when I started. I started off on the inside at about three to four metres, hoping to catch where quite a few around me went straight out on eight or nine metres where we knew we were going to catch. And uh, I'm a great believer in developing the far side first. As it was, I've done absolutely no good on the inside and um, sort of people started to get in front of me a bit, but I think I'm now beginning to catch them up. The guy to my left was catching out on eight or nine metres, but uh, he seems to have dried up at the moment, so... Please God, I've made the right decision. I'll find out in a minute. So I don't think it's fished as well as what, uh, what we anticipated it would. Guys in practice were having six, eight and ten pounds just a couple of days ago and uh, I don't think anybody's going to touch that sort of weight today. Certainly not double figures anyway. Unless there's something going on that I don't know about it. I know they're catching around the corner. <laughs> Nick. Not a lot, Al. It's right hard. What are they doing up there? Uh, bullies on uh, squat, right? Yeah. They're letting it go. Plenty of them, right? Yeah. Really got to give it them. Loads of bait. We ran out of time. Really? Yeah. Just give it them. Because there's millions of fish out there. Oh, I'll try Honestly, that. Yeah. What, emping it? Pumping and emping. They're not feeding them. They stop feeding. They're blowing it out. Yeah? Just go for it. Okay. Yeah. 
It was about an hour to go, wasn't it? Really, it is well worth it, I'm telling you. Don't muck about it. Don't miss it, anybody else. Okay. I'll try it. I'll try it, Nanny. Get it long, down to me. Where are you fishing? In the bottom? Yeah. Show up two inches. Mm. Let's see if we can. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Hey? Should cut. Lee's catching. He's just holding anyway. Half hour ago. He's like catching. Put <coughs> her feet in it. Right in your way. He was right, Al. Nice to have a nice bit of information. Back about. <sighs> They're only small, but... No matter. You keep them coming, last hour, you do alright. It's points, isn't it? Yeah. Just keep them coming. And points make prizes. <laughs> right, I'll leave it alone. I'll see how the others Cheers, go. Cheers, Al. Go for it. Yeah, crack on. Cheers, Al. Another one, 60, again a small one, I'm, I'm catching quite well but uh, I think I've got to look for something different, I've heard this chub in the area, uh, so I think I'll have to go for them, possibly the last 15-20 minutes, I don't want to waste too much time looking for fish that aren't there, as I am catching well and rumour has it is fishing quite hard. Sixty one again small. I'm tempted to stick with these as uh, a lot of people have slowed down. But uh, I don't know. Next door's caught far bigger fish than me. Possibly as many. But uh, as it's a team match I've got to stick with with these ready for the points. I can't waste too much time looking for big fish. Tried all sorts of baits. Still getting gudgeon. Tiny perch. Right, what are you doing on that? I've gone across house, gone a bit quite close in there. Anything? No, not yet. Are you right over? No, I'll gradually go across. I said, let's. No, that's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll give it a go. Let's... Line yourself. Yeah. I'd have cut them on it earlier. Yeah. They just seem to be going backwards and forwards, like, you know. Right, in your way, am I? No, yeah. Oh, nice one. Ah! Oh. Nice one. Oh, yeah. No. Mind out. Should be a few more out there. Alright, I'll leave you alone anyway, alright? Alright, well, fair enough. Yep. Yeah.
do it. Four pounds, seven ounces. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well done. More than I thought. Hmm. better quality yeah, of fish been caught down here right. than at the other end. They're all well, very it. small bits. Whoa, that's good weight there, Tony. Oh, well done. I reckon about seven pounds, eh? I reckon about seven pounds, eh? Seven pounds, you ain't got it right yet. That's a good weight between <laughs> Robo's, I reckon. Or is it all? Uh, no, I'm afraid that's orbital. You've got the wrong team, there. Yeah, ultimately. Wait for orbital. Can you right. turn it around? Look at that, nine. How much? Nine pounds. Six still. Nice one. Six ounces. Nine, six. Well done, Tony. Nice. Well done. Orbitals in front at the moment. Nine point six. Good, good weight today, that. Gently does it. That has got to be the match winner today. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, I five good yeah. One, yeah. I don't don't think that'll be beat. I don't know. Yeah, we want to swim that. I don't know. Brilliant. <coughs> about 15 pounds. Right as much as that. Yeah, it's good angle this case. 15? No, no, I don't think so. There we go. Not big enough net. Oh, Ooh, not no. much in it though. Three pounds. Like my front room, nothing in it. We're <laughs> weighing that ticket and all. Yep. All count. Yep, really. That's it. Little bonus fish. Okay. The rest of it. Right, second Robo's angler. Three pounds. Is it? No. Two. Two twelve. Two twelve. Two pounds, twelve ounces. Alright, right, right. right. right, about two pounds. Huh? Well done. He's done his team steaming in front. Oh, you got a few in there, Chris. Ah, <laughs> uh, some quality fish there. That two pound, pound two ounces. <laughs> well done, Chris. How many is that? Two pound two ounces. Two two. Where's he Brian, you beat somebody. So that's the second orbital one. Nine. Three fifteen. Fair enough. Yeah. Right. Three pound fifteen ounces. Well done, done Dicky. My board's getting extremely wet. <laughs> well done. Two pounds eight ounces. What well am I? Down the board. No, I'm that off, isn't it? Was that a special pen? A special pen, that oh, is. Yeah. How are they doing? Um, nine, eleven, thirteen. About fourteen pounds so far to orbital. 
Who's a few of them quality fish. fish. You can't you pin them together, can you? Class. Danny Cruz has got better ones than that. <laughs> Mind you, he's not got one as big as that. Well done, Paul. Well, there's no little babies in there, is there? Not there. Yeah. Five right. pound, yeah, must five be. Five, no, I ain't got five of them. Four. Yeah, yeah four pound eleven ounces. Yep. Well done, Paul. Well done. Second place. Done well. What weight, yeah. Nine pound, Tony Ram. No, really? Oh, four, four eleven. eleven. I think we might have done you today, Dan. Yeah. Two pound, two ounces. Yeah, All right. So done well done, John. <laughs> Can you all make sure you pick your peg numbers up before you leave your pegs? One pound, nine ounces. Well done, Mick. Well done. <laughs> we'll have to get this sorted and get back to the uh, pub and then do it all in the dry. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. If you can. Pick your peg number up out of the bank there where it's trodden in the mud. Two pounds, four ounces. Well done. Well done, Jeff. Sorry. Yeah, you and me both. Tony Ram, nice it. Oh, yeah. Done well. He did something today, though. What's that mean? Hey, what's that mean? Don't know. You won't know till get to the end and add up all the points. Two, 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 four. Oh, Lee's looking a bit worried here. Two pounds, we'll give you that, Lee. That's all. Two pounds, eh? Oh, no, I've only lost a nigger. Well done. Johnny Bishop. Go on, Brian. Four pounds, three ounces. Well done, Danny. Well done, Danny. Well you can be very close today. There's a lot more fish than me. I never had a fish. I went, yeah. I went, I went an hour without a fish. Four pounds, seven ounces. Huh? Seven. And I, I went an hour and I could I never had a fish. And I was bagging. Oh, you're very close here. One pound, one ounce. Well, well at least you broke pound. the pound. Well done, Gary. What sort of weight you got, John? Seven pounds, by no move along, please. Five seven, mate. About five pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Two pounds, eight ounces. Yeah. 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 Oh, looking bad for all but a wheel. No, four, no. Three, four, five. Four, five. Four, five. Four pound five ounces. Well done, Paul. Four pound five ounces. I'm guessing. Yeah. Right, does the winner get 16 yeah, points 16. down to one or? 16. Yeah, do it back in the pub. Right. Yeah. Well, it's getting well, senior, getting soaked. Do it now. <laughs> right, pretty quiet, please. Results today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I think it's been a very enjoyable day. I think most anglers have enjoyed it. The weather held up for us quite well. What I'll do is I'll do the top seven in reverse order on the day. Uh, seventh, seventh today was Dicky Carl. With, with three pound fifteen. Sixth today was myself with four pound three. Fifth today was Paul Medcrafts with four pound five. Come on, lads. Fourth today 
was Pete Jordan. Four pounds seven. Joint yeah, I'll get to that. <laughs> there was a joint fall today, so uh, Roger Pearson, uh, Sparrow, sorry, was uh, with also a four pound seven. Yeah, third on the day, Paul Grovner. Grovner, was it Grovner? Yeah, four pounds eleven. Second of the day, John Young. With six pound dead. And the winner, and I must say, was from Gears Orbital. Was Tony Van Gulen with nine pounds six? What well Tony? Yeah. <laughs> right. Who come last? What I'm going to do now is I'll do. Who come last? Uh, come on. Who was last? Well, Gary Morgan. Yay! I do the parts in reverse order. Uh, there was joint. There was a joint fall today. <laughs> joint fall today was Pete Jordan and Roger Sparrow. Uh, I think Pete will split that with him. But well done. Cheers. Cheers. Ten pound each. Third today on his own was Paul Grovner. Well done, Paul. I can't get it. £30, well done, Paul. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Second today, from Bethnal Green, was John Young. Well done, John. £70, well done, John. And the winner today, with £9.6, but £120, was Tony Van Gogh. Well done, Tony. Right. Let's have the team result. Now then, you ready for this? <laughs> I don't think you want to do it, but anyway, I shall do it. Gears Orbital, on the day, 61 points. Ooh. Bethnal Green, 77 points. <laughs> but I must, I must stress that <laughs> that the return match is at March and we can't wait. <laughs> which is next Wednesday. <laughs> so, once again, I'd like to thank all of you. And I say, it's been a very enjoyable day. And uh, we look forward to beating you. I mean, we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Thanks, lads. Drinks are on Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Drinks are on Tony. He wanted a hundred and twenty pound. Yeah. 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 Yeah.